congratulations to all of you. Um, can I get your reactions to getting in the Time 100 and starting with you, Natalie? Oh, goodness. Well, I'm honored, of course. I'm a little uncomfortable with the recognition because it belongs to the whole team, I think, my team. Uh, hundreds of scientists and engineers who created a mission that opened our eyes to the small planets that populate the galaxy. So uh, I hope that me being there is a representation of, of that entire group of people who worked so hard. And you're talking about the Kepler mission? Correct. Yes, that's right. Uh, so the Kepler mission, which was launched in 2009, um, has detected about 4,000 planets and focused on, on finding Earth-size or terrestrial-size planets that could potentially be habitable, that is, in the habitable zone or the Goldilocks zone around their star, uh, and has detected about three dozen such planets. Um, so again, it's, it's a work by hundreds of people, both scientists and engineers, and they all deserve recognition. Yeah, well, how, how do you feel about getting into this? Um, well, being in the list, again, it is, it is, as Natalie said, it's an honor. Um, it's a bit embarrassing as well because it's a team. I didn't discover the planet. I led the team that discovered the planet, if you want, or found the planet. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's good for, for our science, for science in general. This is science that excites people. Um, this is a list of they say influential, just not because we found or we applied a new technique, it's because people got engaged in all these discoveries. So people have been following up Kepler, they liked Proxima, and then we had Trappist one. Everything was wonderful and people got excited. It, it, it's been building up and I think that's the result of, of all this work for many people, people from our team, people from other teams in the exoplanet community. I think people have been, also my colleagues and even competitors, have been reacting very nicely in the sense that this is something to be happy about and proud and excited. So um, I'm very happy to contribute to this and being in this list, um, if that helps to, to, to build up this momentum towards finding planets and learning about the universe. Michael, uh, we have mentioned Trappist-1, which uh, I guess is, is, is what you're being honored for. How, how are you feeling about it? Uh, um, well, I'm very honored indeed, but I'm also very glad of, uh, of the, this impact that had the discovery and it, it followed very important over discoveries, the Kepler and Proxima B and so on. And it's a, a world team effort. I'm very glad for my team. I'm very glad for, for the domain, the field of exoplanets. That uh, it, Now it's entering the realm of potentially habitable planets. We are getting close to an answer, the life elsewhere in the universe. and we see that the public is very uh, interested in this question and uh, we, uh, we really hope that this interest will grow, will grow and will, it will help us to answer it because we need the public support to, to be able to answer it, to, be, to have project ambitious, ambitious enough to, to get this answer and we're so close. So it's a really good sign that uh, this, this nomination comes now and uh, for, for, for all my team but also for all the field, uh, I'm very, very glad and also very or not. Why do you think people are getting so excited? Uh, I think that the question of the existence of life is something that is in the mind of many, many people. And from time to time, they stop wondering about, uh, uh, worrying about their own Earth-linked uh, problems and look at the sky. Everyone, I think, does this, or nearly everyone, and uh, wonder, is there someone there? Is there life elsewhere? And it's a, it's a question that has been uh, there since a long time, and uh, I think the fact that we are getting to a, an answer uh, is, is really exciting for, for, for the kids, for many people, and it's, it, it has a huge impact, much more than detecting any planet or anything in, the, in space, but here we're really getting close to something really um, fundamental, I think. Uh, Michael mentioned kind of getting towards an answer, th this feeling of momentum. Is that, is that how you feel about where, where you are in the field? Yeah, absolutely. These exoplanet discoveries are really changing how we see the, the universe. You know, we look up in the sky and instead of seeing stars, we see other solar systems because now we know that every star in the sky has at least one planet. And, and we are. We're getting closer and closer to the day that we'll have the tools to really find evidence of life beyond Earth. And there's a growing awareness of that amongst the public. And I think it's tremendously exciting to be able to look up and not just see them as planetary systems, but as actually living worlds, other living worlds. Uh, that changes our, our place in the universe tr in, in a very fundamental way. Yeah, do, do you feel like... Uh, um, how do you feel, what do you feel is the best way to kind of 
build on this momentum and get more people interested in these fundamental questions? Um, that's a good question. Um, I th well, first of all, I don't think we need to m ask the people to get involved because they are intrinsically involved, intrinsically interested. These are um, kids are excited about aliens and movies, and grown-ups read books. Um, they go to science fiction movies. We, they ha we all have seen Star Wars. Um, there's the, there's the search for life, but there's also the it's it's touching our fantasy. The people is, is, is fantasy is being triggered. We are not talking about abstract places or black holes or binary stars. We are play, talking about planets. Um, they say some people uh, say that this we are cheating in a sense because we are talking about these planets like places to be. Um, but it's it's it is unavoidable. We are motivated. We are working on this field because we are also excited about it. Of course, then we learn our math and we do our technical work. But the excitement it's a very important component on this part of the work. So I think. We actually don't need to convince people this is interesting. People is already intrinsically interested. I think we, we, we need to make this effort of making people participate. So it's not something that we found one day in our closed laboratory, but to make it um, people own what we are finding. This is for, for all of us. Everybody would like to go to the telescope and do it themselves. We are privileged to be able to do it. So I think it's, it's worth to, to, to spread this excitement and, and invite people to, to participate in the process. There, there have also been citizen science efforts uh, which engage people and allow them to experience that thrill of discovery by looking at the publicly available data. And that's really important. I wasn't interested in being a scientist early on because I didn't understand what scientists do. Uh, and now, you, you know, when you have that experience of being able to see something for the first time that nobody else has seen before, that's a, a very powerful experience that, that drives home exactly what science is and, and the kind of meaning it gives to our lives. Mikhail, do you think uh, that, that scientists should get more recognition than they, than they currently do? More people on, on the list like Time 100? I think it would be a good thing because it's a very good uh, trigger, especially for the young generation. Because they, I think they, they, maybe they are lost. Most of young people uh, have doubts and um, could be a, a choosing a, a wrong path or a path which is not really a passion for them, but just a path uh, because they have to select something to do something at some point. And these bright minds, uh, we, science really needs them to, to build on, on this kind of discoveries and make new important breakthroughs. So I think it's very important to attract the interest of the public in general, but especially of the young people, of the kids. And uh, this kind of, of nominations can have uh, the impact which is necessary to, to make them understand that science is cool. And uh, science is not just making boring uh, math and uh, playing with computers, and, but it's really uh, finding new words and shedding light on the universe in which we are living and discovering plenty of new things. So uh, I think it has. I hope that it will uh, go on like this with more nomination of this kind. Finally, I'd like to just ask each of you kind of to sum up, how, sum up how it feels to be working in the field of astrobiology at this moment uh, in, in, in history. I, I mean, it's, it's tremendously exciting. I've been fortunate to be have a front row seat to all of the discoveries since the very first one in 1995. I was at the conference where Michelle Mayor announced the very first planet discovery. And at that time, living in the Southern Hemisphere, looking up at that Alpha, Cent Alpha Centauri right out my bedroom window, it never even occurred to me that there might be a planetary system. And look at where we are now. Um, but mostly, uh, studying this changes your perception uh, you know, finding other worlds makes you love our own even more. Uh, looking at the extreme diversity of planets out there, looking at contemplating lifeless worlds makes you appreciate the living world that we live on and how precious life is. Um, and I really hope that uh, these feelings spread amongst humanity as they too become engaged and think about these other exoplanet discoveries and that somehow this search for evidence of life elsewhere will help to ensure a sustainable future for the human species on, on our own planet Earth right here at home. Yeah. Actually, I, I, when I started my scientific career, I was not working on exoplanets. I was working on astrophysics, but not exoplanets. So it was my choice to move into exoplanets at some point when it was exploding the field 2004, 2005. Um, it was a decision. I'm happy that I took it. But it was also, um, and because this is what I like to do, and that's what I wanted to do. Um, and at some point, 
if you are doing science or engineering or anything, you, you need to have a driver. Otherwise, it's just uh, office work. And for office work, you can get much better paid um, than <laughs> doing science. So um, I, I, I'm doing that because I felt passionate about it. Um, so I'm still very excited, uh, even more overexcited when we had the announcement. I was hyped, of course. Um, so yeah, I hope that we will find many more exciting things. Um, I'm happy that the people is engaged, and I would like to have even more people engaged and participating into all of all of this. So um, yeah, so I don't know how to transfer my um, feelings about this, but uh, I think it's just uh, it's it's an emotional thing. It's not uh, very rational if you want. I don't feel honored. I feel excited. Mm -hmm. So it's di different things: honored for being nominated, excited for participating in the effort. Uh, I feel very lucky, in fact, to be uh, to be living now at the, at the at the time where we are so close to get an answer to the question: Is there life elsewhere in the universe? And furthermore, to participate to this effort, to be uh, really at the forefront of this of this quest for for, for, for an answer to such a fundamental question. And uh, I, I've been in f uh, f I, I've been lucky, I think, all my career uh, because I, I had the chance to work with uh, Michel Mayor as a postdoc and to be really uh, learning about exoplanets uh, among, uh, from real uh, pioneers in the field. And, and now I, I could have the, 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 the chance to, to pursue this, uh, this uh, career and to, to feed my passion uh, about uh, life elsewhere in the universe. And I see really that we're getting to, to an answer. So it's, I feel, first of all, lucky about uh, my, uh, my job. And uh, I appreciate it very much. Every day when I wake up, I, I feel extremely blessed to, to have the, the luck to do it and to do such a, f a great thing for, for living. People always ask me, well, it's great that we're finding these planets, but we'll never go there, right? And, and my response to that, I mean, you know, I can't predict the future, but my response to that is, you know, once we have a destination and you can point in the sky at a planet that, is, that has life that we know is a living world, we're going to figure out how to get there. Um, so, so new discoveries push boundaries, push frontiers, and it's, it's wonderful to see the private sector become involved and, and engage in this, in this journey and to walk along with us. It's, I mean, it's, it's government agencies, public and private, both home and abroad. It's, it's everywhere, so it's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't see the exoplanets as abstract objects that we study remotely and that we will get in our books uh, some pieces of knowledge about them, and that's it. I see really them as a possible destination for the future, because I'm very confident that the laws of physics permit interstellar travel. And now we're not able to do it, but we, we're getting there. Slowly we will get there at some point. If we could reach a, a sustainable uh, environment on Earth, I think we will collect the resource to do this. I, it, it's a huge effort, but this contribution of Breakthrough Starshot is very important to initiate this, this uh, interstellar exploration that we will do at some point, I'm pretty sure. So having these exoplanets found, discovered with potentially habitable conditions, it's really a good trigger to, to push in this direction. And uh, I'm really good to, to see this connection between exoplanets and initiative like Breakthrough Starshot that is getting stronger and stronger. Um, I think that um, the discovery of the planets is giving us the targets. Um, breakthrough is putting things into place. It's very different from doing philosophy or writing articles in newspapers from putting resources, meaning money, uh, on the table. Um, it changes the whole thing. Now I can write proposals, research proposals, and say, this is interesting. And there are plans for thinking about interstellar visits or interstellar probes in 20, 30 years. And I'm, I don't sound crazy. I would sound very crazy three years ago. Um, it doesn't sound like that anymore, because somebody which is made people that made their um, wealth by their own, and they are generally interested. They think it's a good investment to work on this, and it's realistic, and it's not a crazy thing. And because they said that, now we are allowed to formulate these new research proposals and new, this new science in a different way. Even if I don't receive any dollar or anything from Breakthrough, the, the positive contribution, it's already there. And the momentum that it's been accumulating on the exoplanets field, it, it's building up. I think everything is adding up, and, and I think that's the, the most relevant contribution, even if we don't reach the stars in, our, in my lifetime. Um, just the, the driver, the setting the goal and, and 
putting fuel into it, I think it's, I think it's, it's, it's amazing.